the author Roald Dahl once said, those who don't believe in magic will never find it. And that the greatest secrets are always hidden in the most unlikely places. I think every magician can relate to this. Magic is a craft built on secrets and we look for them in the most improbable locations. It's about taking the everyday and finding within it the possibility of illusion. We take the things you're most familiar with, a cup, a ball, a handkerchief, a rabbit, a human being, and we do something impossible with it. Because we are always looking for the magic, we develop a different way of looking at the world. We are obsessively curious. I cannot go into a hardware store without spending hours picking up those blister-packed items off the racks and wondering what else I could do with them. And I'm not interested in hammering nails or cutting wood, and I have no idea what these items would do in the real world, but I can see endless possibilities for them in the magic world. It's something that magicians have in common with hackers. We can't help but look beyond the ordinary function of an object to discover its hidden attributes. For magicians, the world is like the matrix, where surface familiarity hides a far more interesting domain, where objects and ideas can be twisted, morphed, manipulated to do things they were never designed to do. This undermining of audience expectation is how magicians design tricks. It's how ladies are sewn in half, elephants made to disappear, and bullets caught between the teeth. The way in which reality can be sabotaged to produce an unexpected illusion are the secrets of magic. Now many of the things that were considered magic hundreds of years ago are still considered magic today. That's why the classics of magic are still being performed. The cut and restored rope, the Chinese linking rings, these age-old tricks defy the fundamental laws of nature, and those laws do not change. Now, it's possible that one day, science will make self-healing ropes or rings that can penetrate each other, which is why magicians must always stay ahead of the reality curve. Magic is about making possible today what science will make a reality tomorrow. We prototype the future. More than a century ago, magicians demonstrated things that were impossible at that time. Robots, wireless powers, calculating machines, and interactive screens. What once was magic is now reality. So the question is, how can the magician add a layer of illusion to an object or a world that has almost magical properties of its own? With that in mind, I created this. What you're about to see is a, a demonstration of augmented reality. A world I imagine where we can interact with gestures, where gestural sensing and projection will be ubiquitous and intelligent. So the magic happens up here on the screen and the real world is here. You can choose which to watch, the magic, the reality, or a little of each. So let's begin. we go. Start up the magic. Yeah, a little more. <laughs> Gestural sensing. Here we go. All right. Today is a special day. A day we are all sharing. A day that will never be repeated. A day that we will all remember. Because of this. The calendar. 12 months, 365 days, Sometimes a leap year. These days keep a record of our journey through time, past, present, and future. And we all think that one of these days is more special than the others. Our birthday. This is mine, December 13th. And it was on my sixth birthday that I saw my first magician. He produced a rabbit out of a hat. Abracadabra! <laughs> you were of a mystical disposition. You could say that this one day, this particular birthday, did indeed influence my future career. Now you'll be glad to know that I no longer wear the hat. 
There have been many attempts to correlate the date of our birth to our personality. And the most popular of these is astrology. Astrologers believe that our personality can be ascribed to one of the 12 sun signs, patterns produced by the stars. So I'm not only born on December 13th, I'm also born under the star sign of the arch. Sagittarius. Ouch! Sorry. I read horoscopes for fun, but I don't take them very seriously. But then again, we Sagittarians are renowned for our skepticism. The Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung took a different view. He was the founder of analytical psychology and profoundly interested with our connection with archetypes and symbols. We are born at a given moment in a given place and like vintage years of wine, we have the qualities of the year and the season of which we are born. Astrology does not lay claim to anything more. Perhaps we shouldn't dismiss the astrologers too easily. Our own biological clocks depend on the movement of the planets. The sun, after all, rules our day. The light it emits affects the brain, which prevents the production of melatonin, the chemical that makes us feel sleepy. We have evolved a 24-hour body clock that matches the rotation of our planet from day to night as it orbits the sun. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, went further. He suggested that where and when you were born had an influence on your health and your life. My aunt said that summer babies have a healthier disposition, which is a little disappointing for those of us born in the autumn. Now, I was born in the winter, and the Swiss winter at that. Perhaps that's why it's my favorite time of the year. The calendar continues to guide our lives. It's the diary of our days, the sum of every hour we spend. You have it on your wall, your computer, your phone, and of course, your watch. Now, I have no idea whether the day of our birth played a part in our destiny. I leave that to the astrologers and the scientists to figure out. But I do subscribe to something that the theologian William Barclay said. He said that there are two great days in a person's life. The day you were born and the day you discover why. Now, I hope that each and every one of you will discover your one final thing. There are 44 people in this room, and according to mathematicians, there is a 92.51% probability that two of them will share the same birthday, and a 11.37% probability that one of these people have their birthday today. Now, if this is you and you know who you are, then I have only one thing to say. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you.